Good afternoon, brethren. Good afternoon. I, uh, I believe that we are blessed and fortunate to uh, have been given what we have been given. And uh, have you ever known any fishermen? I mean, real fishermen. And I don't mean fishermen like Suzanne and myself. We like to go to Bishop every year. We've been doing that for a little over a little over 50 years. But when we catch fish, and it's mostly Suzanne that does the catching, they're trout, you know, they're relatively small. But what I meant when I said, have you ever known any fishermen? I meant, have you ever known any tuna fishermen? Please raise your hand if you've known an authentic tuna fisherman. Oh, okay, there are two, three people that have actually known some authentic. I won't ask you who they were, but San Diego used to be. San Diego used to be the tuna capital of the United States. And I, I don't want to say the whole world, but I know it was on the West Coast. And uh, Suzanne and I have lived here long enough to have known a couple of uh, tuna fishermen. And they are big and robust and they're tough. And, and the reason is they don't fish with a little you know, lure like I do when I go up to the Sierras. They have huge uh, tackle that they use and the tuna that they bring in sometimes are 100, 200 pounds. They're big. I want to talk about the Apostle Peter today. Now, he was not a tuna fisherman. He fished in the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. I'll mention that later on. But uh, he and three of his buddies were among the first 12 ones called by Jesus. And I'll, I'll get to why I'm mentioning this at the end, but... Uh, he was relatively young at the time. I mean, he wasn't 40 yet. You know, if we can believe all the extra biblical things that we read about him. He was relatively young in his 30s, and he was able to handle that tackle and the boat and all that kind of stuff that those fishermen out of. Why? Because Galilee is only like 285 feet deep. Relatively good size, kind of like South Lake up in... Uh, out, of, out of Bishop, but it's not huge, but it's not very deep. And when storms come up in that area, they get wild really quick, and you get in trouble. You get in trouble if you're in a little boat, and I'll mention that too later on. The point I want to make with this sermonette right now is... God knew what Peter was like, and God knows what you and I are like. And in spite of what we were like, God chooses to use you and I in the work that God is doing today. Now, let's get into God's word. Let's get into the Bible right now. Let's go to John 21. That's toward the end of, uh, toward the end of the Gospels. John 21. Isaiah won't work. Luke won't work. John 21, just before Acts. John 21, and uh, verse 1 starts out like this. After these things, well, what were the things that they were talking about? Well, after these things were after uh, the crucifixion, death of Jesus, after his resurrection, but, but before what? Before what? Before that first New Testament Pentecost. I'll talk about that a little bit later, too. So anyway, John 21, verse 1, after these things, after these things, Jesus, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Galilee. As I mentioned, it's also called the Sea of Tiberias, because we're going to read that later. Same place, different name. 
Then on verse 2, we see a list of all the guys who saw Jesus that particular day on that lake. And here were their names, Simon Peter, comma, Thomas, called the twin for various reasons, Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, who uh, were also called the sons of thunder. I wonder why they called them the sons of thunder. They were mild, milk toast kind of people, right? You know, they never got on anybody's nerves. Anyway, uh, that is James and John, and two other disciples that are not named in this particular place. Verse 3, Simon Peter said to them, these are all the other guys standing around, I'm going fishing. Remember when this is? 40 days? 40 days after Jesus' death and resurrection? I'm going fishing. You know why he said that? Because he's a fisherman. And he liked fishing. I like fishing. She likes fishing. I'm going to say it again. I'll try not to say it too many more times. She catches more fish than me. And after she gets her limit, I get to fish. <laughs> anyway. They said to him, okay, Peter, we're going with you also. So they went out and immediately they got into the boat and that night they caught zero or nothing. And, and night's supposed to be the time that you catch most of the fish. You know, I, I know that. But when the morning had now come, verse 4, Jesus stood on the shore and yet the disciples disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, wait, wait a minute. When you read that the first time, did you ever wonder why he said children? Children, these are big fishermen, you know, think of tuna fishermen here in San Diego. Children, that's a kind of a playful diminutive term, you know, but he was Jesus. This is our Lord and Savior. He was messing with them just a little bit, just a little bit. <sighs> they said to, or he said to them, have you caught anything? I mean, that's really kind of, <laughs> isn't that kind of rubbing it in? Have you caught anything? He knew this is our Lord and Savior. He knew exactly how they'd been doing. Have you caught anything? But he didn't mean it in a bad way. And they said, no. So he said to them, and this gets a little bit stranger. He said to them, well, cast the net. Obviously, they're close enough that he can talk to them. Of course, the uh, sea or the ocean, you know, carries your voice pretty far. But he says, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did. They didn't argue. They just did it. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, who was that? John, John, John. He says, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. Peter, when he heard that it was the Lord, now, why didn't Peter catch on? <laughs> because he was a fisherman. Okay, Peter, when he heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had uh, re removed it, and he plunged into the sea, verse 8. But the entire, uh, excuse me, but the other disciples came in the little boat, and it was pretty little, uh, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, I like to say yards, dragging the net with the fish. Then, verse 9, then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals and there was a fish on it already. You know, he's cooking breakfast for these guys. I like that. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. You know, it's like he knew, he knew that they were going to catch some fish. I want to keep reading here. Simon Peter went up and he dragged the net to the land full of large fish. I'm not going to get into this. 153? Okay. 
And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Now, I want to skip down to verse 14 because I don't have all day to give this sermonette. Verse 14. Now, this is the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after, after, I emphasize that, after he was raised from the dead. This was 40 days after Jesus' miraculous resurrection or 10 days before that first New Testament Pentecost. What we have just read in uh, John 21 takes place before Peter received God's Holy Spirit. He was with Jesus for what? Three and a half years? Three and a half years he was with Jesus? He was with God. <laughs> Jesus is God. He's with him. Three and a half years. But he didn't have God's Holy Spirit inside of him to help him think, to motivate him. It was around him, but not in him. But he should have thought of this, so we'll go there now. What did uh, Jesus prophesy to him and his fellow fishermen when he first called them? Do you remember? Well, if you don't remember, Let's go to Mark 4. Mark 4. This is at the beginning. When they had first been called and chosen. Mark 4, verse 19. Then he, that's Jesus, said to them, the four fishermen, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Do you think, do you think that they thought about the metaphor or the uh, the way that Jesus was speaking in uh, parable. Do you think they thought about that? Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. You know, these are big fishermen. Do you think they thought? I don't think they thought about it at all. I don't think they thought about it one bit. But I do want to conclude. I do want to conclude by reading a chunk, a large piece of uh, scripture. I want to conclude by telling you something that Peter said on that first New Testament Pentecost after, after he received the gift of God's Holy Spirit. Didn't have it before. Associated with Jesus for three and a half years. Still didn't have it. Jesus was God. He was with him. But he didn't have it inside of him. So go to Acts 2. You know where I'm going. You should know. Acts 2 verse 1. And I will read the New Living Translation here. Acts 2 verse 1. New Living Translation says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. How many believers were there? At that time, you know, you can probably tell me right off the top of your head, but how many people were in Jerusalem at that time keeping the Feast of Pentecost? Thousands. We, we estimate other much more erudite scholars than me estimate three, five, ten thousand. There could have been a bunch of them there. How many received God's Holy Spirit on that first New Testament Passover? Pe Pentecost, Pentecost, PP, Pentecost. 120, 120. So Acts 2, I'll start in verse 4. Back to the old King James. And they, and they, the 120, were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other people tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 5, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men and women, from every nation under heaven. Now I want to read the last part of verse 6, because this is important. Skipping over the first part of verse 6, but the last part of verse 6, everyone heard 
them speak in his own language. First time I heard this preached, 50 years ago or so, I went, huh? <laughs> Somebody, I don't even know where Suzanne and I were, but I remember the guy, the person, the speaker, saying the miracle was in the hearing. The miracle took place in the minds of the people who were prepared by God to hear the correct thing. How do I know that? Well, look at this. Verse 7. Then all were amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all of these Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born. So these old Galilean fishermen are up there going blah, 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 you know, whatever it is Galilean talk. And yet, the ones that God wanted to hear, the ones who God had given ears to hear, heard what? What did they hear? They heard the wonderful the wonderful words of God. Now, let's go down to verse 16. Go down to verse 16. Because this is where I'm going to make my point. Verse 16. Peter. Peter was preaching. Where was he preaching from? He was preaching from uh, the prophet Joel. He says, verse 16. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days says God, that I, God, will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I like that, on my maid servants, so God's not leaving the ladies out, on the maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. See you all concentrating on your Bibles. Brethren, those days are now. That's where we are. You know, I'm not saying day after tomorrow you open the door and somebody's going to walk in. You know, I, I don't know that. But we're in the last days. This is the last days time and it shall come to pass verse 21 and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved wow do you notice Peter was preaching right out of the Old Testament right out of the Old Testament are you familiar with those prophecies because they're real and they're applied to us we know and we understand that those who could not hear accused those guys who were all Galileans of being drunk. We know that. We read that in Acts 2. But that was the world then. What do you think the world's like now? It's exactly the same thing. If somebody were to come in and listen to me, they go, ah, I got drunk. You know, I have friends say the same thing. People just cannot understand God's simple truth. Peter was a fisherman before. Peter was a fisherman afterwards. But after he received God's Holy Spirit, he and his closest friends started fishing for a somewhat new exotic species. People. <laughs> 